What's up, YouTube? Don't forget to save, aka Sam, back at you with another Monday video. Uh, quick shout out to everybody who showed up uh, for the Friday stream. We had uh, the final Friday After Dark live. Hey, you guys should go back. It was awesome. Jay showed off a bunch of cards. We had fun. You know, go back. And, and Vogs as well. Vogs showed some cards on there too. Um, definitely go check it out. With all that said, guys, drop a like, comment on this video. Subscribe if you haven't. We're going to go into some history today, and it's history with a meaning and a lesson. So with all that said, let's get it started. So today we're going to talk about the Civil War again. And uh, the reason I talk so much about the Civil War is because, you know, it shaped a lot of my dad's fam my dad's side of the family. And a lot of my history kind of goes back to that. And it, you know, ended up uh, in the long term, it, it Basically, I come from my dad's side of the family is a military family. So, you know, it kind of speaks to the roots of my family, basically. That's why I kind of focus on it. But there's a lot of lessons that can be learned out of it, too. So today we're going to talk about that. Now, back in, 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 in you know, the, the late 1860s or whatever, like, uh, people had a very, very different view of honor, guys. And I'm going to break it down for you, okay? We're going to talk about combat Honor and combat in, in the battlefield in the Civil War. And a very, very nuanced and complicated thing, but I'm going to try to break it down for you guys. So so here's what it was. like The way it was you know, uh, looked at back then is any ideal or belief that could not be vindicated on a field of battle, you might as well not bring it up to me. And it doesn't matter what that topic is or subject is, whether it's slavery or the government, whatever it is. Like, if, if, it, if it crosses that line, you know, now we're going to fight, right? So... That, that, that's how they viewed it. Now, when they recruited a bunch of these soldiers from their their, their respective play, uh, homes and residences, they, they didn't, uh, you know, all these guys that knew each other and stuff, they just went to the recruitment office. And so, like, you're there with your neighbors, your, your other family members, like, everybody there in your own unit knows who you are, right? Knows where you're from, right? The doctor that's, you know, if you get shot that takes care of you, probably birthed you, okay? That's what we're kind of talking about here. So, Let's say you go on a field of battle. Back then, it was known as uh, the Red Badge of Courage or uh, Seeing the Elephant. You know, there's a bunch of different little catchy fun words for it. But, uh, you know, that's the terminology they would use. And it's, you know, so, you know, I'll tell you guys the the uh, the most uh, dishonorable way in the Civil War you could die on a field of battle is to be shot through the back. Now, the reason for that is, is if you are shot through the back, that means you weren't facing the enemy. It is a sign of cowardice. That's the way they took it. And again, everybody around knows your family, the town you come from and everything. So if you get shot in the back on a Civil War battlefield, they'll go back to that you know hometown at some point and they'll let everybody know that you died at a coward's death. And that's straight up. I, I'm, I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. That is it's what it was. The family would be ostracized. You raised a child that grew to an adult that was a coward. You don't deserve our respect. That's just how they viewed it. Now, so the, the big thing of the honor was you die with your face to the enemy. That was a big key of honor. If you, Even if you lost the battle, at least you died with your face to the enemy. And, and that was kind of the, uh, you know, the honor. Now, I'm going to give you guys a couple examples here. So I'm going to, you know, do my editing and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So I'm going to give you guys a couple quick examples here, and I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to kind of bring it full circle and show you guys, you know, how it kind of works here. So um, right after uh, Cold Harbor, it was uh, the Union again. Man, the Union had this really disagreeable uh, thing where they'd storm a, a fortified position and get, you know, cut to ribbons in the process. And at Cold Harbor, that's exactly what happened. So uh, at the time, they had a bunch of troops that were basically their goal was to defend Washington. They had these, you know, these troops and cannons and stuff all sit around the outskirts of Washington, D.C., right? Well, Grant needs more troops to feed in the machine. So, they, you know, he goes and he pulls these, you know, divisions from around Washington. Now, you know, they'd be marching up towards the front and, you know, they'd have people asking them, well, what division are you in? And, you know, where, you know, what, what are you doing here? You know, that kind of thing. Now, on the way, on the road up the way, right before they reached the front, they'd, they'd have a guy there and he'd have a sheet over this body. And it was an artillery, uh, you know, death. And those were the, that's like the most gruesome, like, you know, unspeakable thing that you can imagine seeing somebody that got shot by a cannonball. And like, they got him with a blanket over him on the side of the road. 
And as soon as that division would come up to it, they'd pull that blanket off of that and show the troops that are marching what you got to look forward to once you get to the front. Now imagine that you're one of them troops marching in there. You haven't heard a fire, a shot fired in anger the entire war. And, you know, they're showing you this, right? So, like, you know, it's, 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 it's intense, guys. Now, another example of this was during Gettysburg. Uh, it was right before uh, Pickett's Charge, and they're getting ready, you know, again, charge over open field. It's never, like, guys, if you, if for whatever reason, you're ever in a crowd and they say, hey, there's, you know, a bunch of people with guns over here and we're going to charge their position, don't do it. Anyway, so they're, they're talking, and, you know, uh, it was, I think it was a North Carolina unit, if I remember right, and... They, the, you know, the, 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 the sergeant of the unit was like, well, what, what, what if I was to tell you boys that, uh, you know, uh, if you marched, uh, forward across this field and if your death could save our Confederacy, what would you do? And, uh, one of the privates stands up and he said, Sergeant, I would walk across to the, this field, to walk up to the cannon and pull the lanyard myself. So, you know, just to show you guys the amount of uh, some kind of, would call it mental disability, but uh, these guys meant what they said, right? Like they, they, they were like, they had no fear of death whatsoever. Like there was just, there was just, it was what it was, right? So what does this all have to do with Sam? Why, why what, all this history you're telling us, what, what's the point? Well, the point I'm trying to get at here is, is this does have practical effect in modern life. And now maybe not to the intensity, like, Look at everything in your life like it's a battle. Like, that's how I was raised. So that's what my advice would be if you want to understand it, is you got to look at it from the angle that it's everything is a battle. So, like, no matter what, is if you die, at least you die with your face to the enemy. You know, I know a lot of people on here, uh, Lisa Z, uh, you know, uh, that dude Mike, and, and, and there's other people, too, that aren't, maybe aren't dealing with physical issues, but other issues that, you know, may be as bad as physical issues or cause stress, which can cause physical issues. So... You know, I know a lot of people that, you know, they have struggles in life and, you know, a little bit of this is a good thing. Now, going overboard with it isn't, but like a, sprinkle in a little bit of I'll die with my face to the enemy and you'll, you never know what will happen. I'll give you an example out of my life and that, that this happened this year and it's not really something that I don't want to talk about a whole lot, but I'll talk about just because it, it has something to do with this. So, um, you know, the last time that my daughter contacted me, she had cancer. Um, me and my daughter had, we had a contentious relationship, to put it mildly. Uh, but, uh, you know, the last thing I remember saying to her is that I'm going to keep fighting no matter what happens. Like that was my, like, that was my final, you know, that was it. That's all I really had to say. Um, you know, and so at 2023, I'm going to either die facing the enemy but I'm not going to get shot in the back, guys. I promise you guys that. 2023, I will either die with my face to the enemy or I will have victory. One of the two, whichever one comes first. So with all that said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have fun making these. It's just me rattling on about stuff that means a lot to me. And I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate everybody that likes and comments on my videos. With all that said, guys, I got a few more videos this week before Christmas. I hope everybody's holidays are going well. Uh, peace and love to everybody, even after I just got done talking about, you know, die with your face to the enemy. Yeah, peace and love, guys. So with all that said, guys, until next video, love your hobby and love you back. Peace.